What is up, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Austin, also known as Mad Gigabit. So I actually wanted to take the time out and say I apologize for anyone who's been trying to contact me. I've been a little busy here making content on the TikTok side uh, and launching our own hosting firm for uh, different game servers, websites, and all that. Check it out at madgigabit.com or hit up discord.io slash madgigabit. For more information about that, if you're interested in any sort of web hosting, email hosting, uh, DDoS protected DNS, DDoS protected game server hosting, anything like that, give us a shout. We're always here to help. Uh, we have in-house Adobe certified uh, graphic designers. We have web devs. We have uh, network engineers. Anything you need, just hit us up. Uh, I am actually here to talk about, as you see from the video title, uh, the Comcast Xfinity data cap. And I wanted to give my little insight about what it is and how it's kind of unfair in a way and how there's one easy way to get around that. So we'll get into that here in a little bit. But uh, first, I wanted to talk about what exactly is this data cap. So Comcast has gotten rid of their region. So they had different states that were kind of in like a region and then inside that like outside that region was a division the division was made up of multiple regions and basically in the northeast which is where comcast was originated this is where they basically laid all of their fiber internet basically the best of their network is here in the northeast of the united states uh and that for me ends shortly inside of Ohio because part of Ohio is not part of the Northeast Division. Um, I'm actually part of the Keystone region for Gigabit Pro which is their fiber and inside outside that is the Northeast Division. So the Northeast Division does not have a data cap and this is causing a lot of issues. This is causing a lot of grief for people because they're like Hey, I'm in California. I have Comcast Xfinity. I'm being billed overages, but you guys up in the Northeast can download as much as you want. And for those of us who are very pro free internet and open internet, um, basically we have a small complaint. And that complaint is that if we're supposed to have this open internet, this free internet, you know, you shouldn't have, like if you're paying for it, you should be able to use it to your fullest capacity. But on a network side, as a systems administrator, there's also this terms of use and acceptable use policy because, but the thing is Comcast is very smart. Their network is very smart. They have AI. Uh, and and this, is, this is known if you know a good bit about Comcast. So they actually have AI that monitors your account. And what they do is they do statistics and these statistics are hourly, daily, weekly. Basically, they look to see if there's any peak times uh, that you're using the Internet. And in a way, they oversell. Let's be honest. Everyone does. Uh, in a way, they oversell. So let's say little old granny over here just wants to triple play because it's the cheapest package uh, for to get Netflix and all these channels. So she has a gig Internet. She only uses her cell phone. Maybe, maybe at max with Netflix running, she's using maybe like a hundred megs out of that twelve hundred. So what Comcast will do is they know she's only going to use up to a hundred. So what they do is they take that extra because there, mind you, there is a ten percent or twenty percent overselling that they do. They do a twenty percent over over provisioning. Sorry, over provisioning. So your twelve hundred meg your 1.2 gigabit gigabit account uh is actually 1400 they over provision that but what they do is that ai knows she's only going to use like maybe 100 150 at max at very max so when she decides she's going to use more than that the ai automatically at the routing which is their backbone is called ibone if you do a trace route will actually sit there and it's all automated because it's AI. It'll be like, oh, hey, she's going over 150 megs. We're going to allocate more bandwidth to her because she doesn't use it. But whereas you'll see gamers and all that who's constantly downloading stuff, who's hitting that 1.2 gig cap, hitting that one gig cap. So they're going to deprioritize their data. They do not throttle. They do not slow down, but they will deprioritize. And they will say, you know, in, in the white paper is basically they're a heavy user. 
they'll still get internet obviously but we're going to deprioritize them so that way granny over here who doesn't use it that much every month can get the faster speed that she's paying for and this guy here just gets a little bit slower speed until she's done using it which it's all automated um and you don't even know that's happening and it's happening on on the comcast side at the routing so basically the northeast division has such a, a better network that they actually don't need a data cap whereas where Comcast has expanded and Xfinity has expanded they do need a data cap just because their networks cannot handle it in addition there's a lot more people out there with less bandwidth available hence the data cap however um if you have gigabit pro which is their fiber i have it's a metro ethernet metro e install uh if you have a business account or if you actually have a prepaid internet plan you actually do not have a data cap and that's nationwide wherever comcast xfinity is comcast business xfinity is residential so i say comcast xfinity as a whole because i'm talking about both comcast and the xfinity brands now um what exactly is the data cap like how much can you actually use so the limit is 1.2 terabytes and i did the math online so that's 150 hours of 4k streaming now now let me let me say this um if you do downloads if you're downloading games or anything like that this varies greatly uh as to how much you can use per day but typically if you were to take 1.2 terabytes and limit that out over the span of uh 30 days 31 days i think i think comcast uses 30 days it's roughly 40 gigs per day it's around 40 gigs per day and 40 gigs per day is not much that's actually only five hours of streaming that doesn't include video calls that doesn't include downloads that doesn't include um listening to music downloading music uh watching youtube videos in 1080p you know this is like 4k netflix hulu streaming five hours a day that's it and you can only use 40 gigs per day okay let's just say you know you have a gig you get you have that 1.2 gig package it goes up to 1.4 with the over provisioning you're running at 1400 megs so like oh yeah you know i i'm not gonna hit 40 gigs a lot of these games now but their updates alone could be 10 gigs or more i mean grand theft auto uh look at all how big these games are these games are over 100 gigs so that's basically like hey you can download that game but don't use the internet for the next three days because you're gonna go over your limit now comcast well sorry xfinity again xfinity is residential i don't know much about the comcast business side besides gigabit pro and metro e i know all about that because i have it however for the residential side xfinity where i came from uh there is a workaround now this workaround it used to be around 50 dollars a month i think it was 55 a month it could be 50 or 55 it used to be you could get your account upgraded to premium unlimited bandwidth basically remember how i said about that ai that was gonna that sits there in the background and it basically makes sure that it's all load balanced correctly so granny can download all of her stuff because she doesn't use it as much so this was basically a you grease xfinity's palms they'll pretend the ai don't exist for your account it was 50 55 a month and what it would do is it would make your bandwidth unmetered and what it would also do is prioritize your data above everyone else's and again you were basically greasing the palms so that way they could do it and um this kind of ticked people off so now there is a small difference you can now get that for 30 dollars so the workaround is 30 dollars more a month for your internet and it'll make it unlimited unmetered data now i was told by a xfinity representative at the store a couple days ago when i was there and i was just there today again when because i switched over to xfinity mobile which i'll cover very b briefly here um i was told if you get the xfi complete system basically they come in they check to see where any wi-fi dead spots are it's like 20 a month i think they said that x5 complete is $20 a month which is what it shows online and the unlimited data was $5 more per month so it was like $25 a month with x5 complete you get like a tech upgrade and stuff like that uh, a new modem 
which they just came out with the XB8s. The XB8s are slowly starting to come out in the markets, in the different uh, divisions. The XB8 is their newest modem. They came out with the XB6 years ago, just came out with the XB7 about two years ago, maybe a year and a half ago, and now they came out with the XB8. So you'll get a new one of those if you're on, I think it's like the Extreme or the Gig Plan. Um, but I'm pretty sure it's X5 complete, 20 a month, and then for unlimited data, it's $5 per month. Um, it's just that this data cap causes a lot of issues with people and which makes me bring up about why I switched back to Xfinity Mobile. So I was on the Stetson Doggett podcast with Dennis and they obviously know a lot about phone plans. That is their podcast, Best Phone Plans. And we were talking about it and not that I didn't believe them. I just had to hear it for myself from an Xfinity rep. Um, but actually... If you were to get Xfinity Mobile because you're a Comcast customer, you're an Xfinity customer, they kind of look over that 22 gig data limit. Because let me tell you what, back then when you hit 22 gigs of data on Xfinity Mobile, you were now on 1.5 megs. It was like DSL. You couldn't even load a video. However, if you look at the fine print now, 5G and C-band, which is most of where everything is nowadays for the most part, if you're near a metro area like I am, uh, it does not count towards that 22 gigs. Also, if you're at home, connect to Wi-Fi. It doesn't use your cellular data. I, uh, excuse me, I only use my cellular data at home whenever I'm doing networking stuff and need to see what it looks like from an outside IP. Yes, I could use a VPN, but I'd rather just look at my phone. It's right there, just boop look and be like oh hey i can connect from the outside i know the dns through xfinity now it was verizon um loads fine so i know i don't have any dns issues but honestly uh xfinity mobile it is 45 dollars per line 47 with tax and you also get 10 dollars off your internet plan so just theoretically just imagine you get data you, you get a phone plan for 35 a month basically it's 45 take that 10 off it's like 35 a month uh it's tied to one bill i did that i'm happy with it no issues i ported in like five minutes i was out the door before i walked out the door i was able to make a phone call definitely check it out but uh for those of you who do have a 1.2 terabyte data limit Drop down in the comments i want to hear where you are how much data do you use are you being charged overages I am asking you these questions. Please be honest with me. I'm very, very curious um, with what's going on with your accounts. Like, are you being charged overages? How much data are you using? Did you know about this to where you could upgrade for 30 a month or 25 with X5 complete? Let me know in the comments down below. Be sure to subscribe, like, follow. Check me out on Instagram, TikTok. I'm on Twitter and Facebook at Mad Gigabit. Thank you, guys.